Hi, I'm Jack from Jack's Transmissions. Today we're going to talk about the GTR GR6 clutch assembly. This is the complete assembly here, uh, fully assembled. We go over here, first we're going to talk about the application of torque, uh, where all of that energy is going. First we have this piece, which the input shaft from the transmission splines into and rotates. This whole thing rotates like this. Then we have the carrier assembly, which splines into this piece. And because it's splined together, the carrier also turns with this piece with the input shaft of the transmission. And then inside the carrier, we have a series of frictions and steels. The steel, the teeth on the outer, outer part of the steel actually spline into the carrier and rotate with the carrier as the assembly moves. It's all fixed together. Then we get to the friction ring, um, which actually sits up against the steel. And the friction ring is the first part of this process that's independent from everything else. It's not splined into anything. So as the rest of the assembly moves, the friction can stay still. As you add pressure to the system, you know, a, a downward force onto the friction and steel It'll generate friction between the two pieces, and then the friction plate will begin to rotate. So on the inside of the friction, you have splines, and those actually spline into the clutch basket, as you see here. So when we have all those pieces together inside this assembly. As the outer assembly moves, and we generate friction between the friction and steel, the whole assembly will move together as one. If we take pressure away from the friction, it will sit there at idle, and the basket will be stationary while the outer carrier assembly continues to rotate. The basket transfers power to the input shaft of the gear sets. You have an A basket and B basket. A is 246, B is 135 reverse. So knowing that, we're gonna dig into this clutch assembly here real quick. I'm just gonna blow this thing open so we can see all the parts inside and how it does this. Remove this clip here. This is the A piston and seal for 246. And the way this works is you have an oil channel here at the bottom, which oil pressure will fill the cavity here in this, in this area on the top and actually put fluid pressure on this seal and push this piston up. As this piston is pushed upward, this assembly here will also be moved up. And when that is moved in an upward direction, these pads here at the bottom contact the frictions on the back side here, which we we're going to look at here. You see these holes here, these excess holes for these pieces to make contact. As you apply pressure, this whole assembly actually pushing down on the plates. So as we add pressure to the, the seal, the seal moves in an upward direction which actually moves this in this direction and actually applies pressure to the frictions and steels which will generate friction and apply the torque. So move the baskets out. Here are the plates for the A side, 246, and on this basket. So as pressure is applied, we add more and more pressure. It's gonna, it's gonna allow the whole assembly to rotate. So that's it for the 246 side. It's just that simple. It's pretty ingenious to have a seal on one side and transfer all of that pressure over to the other end like that. That's how they can make this so compact. So the 246 on that side, that's how that works. We go over to the 135 reverse side and we have another piston assembly on the top. And again, you have fluid which enters a cavity inside here and this piston will move in this direction. When it moves in that direction, you can see here from the witness marks on this steel, it'll contact this steel, apply pressure to the system, and generate friction 
to allow uh, torque transfer to the baskets. Take this clip off, and there's our friction and steels on that side. So that's about it. So here's the carrier. You see it's divided in the middle. That's a very basic explanation as to how this clutch system works. Hopefully it makes sense. Basically all a clutch is doing is it's just transferring uh, the engine power to the gear set and in a smooth manner. The less pressure you have, the more slip it's going to have, and you know, the smoother the engagement, the more pressure you have, the more everything is going to generate friction and the more torque it will transfer to the gear set. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, email us at sales at jackstransmissions.com. Also join us on Facebook. We have a DCT owners group in there. We're trying to add all of these videos uh, in that one area as well. Thanks for watching.